This chapter 2 illustrates the construction of a capped, floored, and colored FRN, and also discusses the market conditions that make each of these particularly attractive to investors. The examples in this chapter assume the investor and the issuer are dealing directly with one another and that no arranger or intermediary is involved. In Chapter 3, we will reflect the more realistic situation in which an arranger brings the two parties together and assists in the structuring of the transaction. We begin with probably the simplest structure in this module, namely the cap. FRN. Throughout this module we will take the case of a highly rated issuer, typically double A or double A plus, and assume that this issuer can issue five-year senior unsecured debt at either three-month LIBOR flat on a floating rate basis or at the five-year swap rate on a fixed rate basis, which is revealed on worksheet pricing grid to be 4.77% on a quarterly pay basis. A floating rate investor now approaches this issuer explaining that in return for a higher fixed spread over LIBOR she would be willing to accept a cap on her coupon if LIBOR reaches very high levels. This investor is taking the view either that LIBOR will not go that high or that if it did she would not mind too much receiving a below market coupon, one that is still presumably much higher than today's LIBOR level. Noting that three-month LIBOR stands today at 2.5% only, the issuer suggests to the investor that she invest her money in a five-year floater issued by this issuer and also sell a five-year cap to the issuer struck at 5%, which would earn her an upfront premium of 449 basis points, as you can confirm from the worksheet. Rather than collecting this premium upfront, however, it is agreed that the premium will be amortized over the life of the FRN and added into the coupon as a positive spread over LIBOR. A very good approximation for this calculation can be achieved by annuitizing the upfront premium over 20 equal payments using the 5-year swap rate as the annuitization rate or for more accuracy by using individual discount factors for each of the 20 additional payments that will occur over the life of the instrument as a spread over LIBOR. Our next two worksheets, Annuitization 1 and Annuitization 2, show you how to do this under either approach. In worksheet annuitization 1, we simply insert the upfront premium of 449 basis points in the cell C4. The 5-year swap rate is already in cell C5 and the total number of periods over which we are annuitizing the upfront premium is in cell C6. Then we go to cell C8 and we use the PMT function 
that has just opened in front of you here to derive the quarterly installment under the annuity comes out to 25.37 as you can see and finally to convert this into an annualized amount we simply multiply by 4 Worksheet Annuitization 2, which shows the more accurate method, first lists in column C the discount factor for each payment under the proposed annuity. You will see that a large number of rows has been hidden here. All of these discount factors, of course, are copied from Worksheet Pricing Grid. These were simply copied and pasted in here. Then in cell C28, the worksheet provides for the quarterly installment, but this is initially our guess of 20 basis points. Cell D26 then calculates the sum of the PVs of each 20 basis point installment and compares the sum to the upfront 449 basis points appearing in cell C27. Clearly this guess of 20 basis points was too low since the PVs only added up to 360 and so we now use goal seek and set this item in cell D26 equal to 449 by changing our guess over here reaching the answer 24.9 basis points or an annualized equivalent in this cell C29 of 99.64 basis points so very close to the hundred or so basis points that we got in the previous worksheet rounding these two answers to 100 basis points we can proceed to deliver to the investor a so-called capped FRN whose stated coupon, as you see here, is now LIBOR plus 1% instead of LIBOR flat, but which never pays a coupon higher than 6% all in, being the 5% cap on the LIBOR component plus the 100 basis point spread that we just calculated. We show here the term sheet for this instrument which should raise no surprises. In essence, the investor is receiving a 1% higher spread than under a regular FRN, but is taking the risk of being capped at 6% during any period in which 3-month LIBOR resets above 5%. The slide appearing now in front of you summarizes this trade-off via this simple graph that plots the coupon under this instrument versus that under a regular FRN. The capped FRN appearing in red while the regular FRN appearing in blue and should be again very self-explanatory. Note in particular that there is a break-even point for the coupons corresponding to the 6% LIBOR level, obviously, above which the regular FRN, the blue, outperforms in terms of coupon the capped alternative.
one disadvantage of the capped FRN is its greater price volatility versus the regular FRN. Assuming no changes in credit spreads, a regular FRN generally trades very close to par at all times unless short-term interest rates move by enormous amounts between coupon reset dates. The formal proof for this observation is left to our dedicated module on FRNs, but intuitively it should be obvious that higher coupons will be offset by higher discounting rates and lower coupons offset by lower discount rates, enabling a regular FRN to maintain substantially higher price stability than a bond with fixed rate coupons. The capped FRN, however, puts the investor in a short cap position, and this exposes her to mark-to-market -to losses if either interest rates generally rise or alternatively if cap implied volatility rises or of course both. We illustrate this on this worksheet cap FRN MTM for mark to market in which we reprice the 5% cap Assuming the LIBOR curve has suddenly risen by parallel 100 basis points and vols have increased to 40% annualized. Over on the right, we now see in this cell T16 that the five year cap struck at 5% is now worth 774 basis points representing therefore for the investor a mark to market loss since he is short that cap of some 3.25 percent from the original upfront premium that was 449 basis points we remind you The more astute of our listeners may also note that the remaining component of the capped FRN would also suffer a small decline in price since the 100 basis point annuity that was added to the LIBOR coupon would now be discounted at higher interest rates. Although this second effect will be marginal compared to the one just observed on the short cap. This worksheet annuitization 3 estimates this effect this time by taking the quarterly installment under the annuity and fixing it at a quarterly 25 basis points and calculating the present value of this five-year annuity as we know at 450 basis points. Now we shift upward the LIBOR curve by parallel 1%, which we can do simply by changing this entry right here, since all the others are linked to it. That, of course, makes the discount factors in the next column on the right decline a little bit, which in turn reduces the PVs in this column E and brings the total down to underneath 440 basis points. So we see readily that the total impact from this second effect has been less than 10 basis points in price terms since the original value of this annuity was, we remind you, around 449 basis points before interest rates rose. And so our original suspicion 
was correct that by far the greater impact would come from the revaluation of the short cap itself and the annuity contributes only a small additional effect. All in, our capped FRN, which was issued at par, would now trade only slightly above 96, when we add together the 3.75% loss on the short cap to the 10 basis point loss on the annuity. It should be obvious that the reverse would happen, of course, if rates fell and or cap volatilities were to decline. The absolute value of the short cap position would diminish, so the capped FRN would rise above par, possibly by several percentage points if these movements were large enough. We conclude this discussion of capped FRNs by emphasizing that the issuer may or may not choose to monetize the cap he has bought. If he leaves everything as is, he would, of course, be incurring a higher funding cost than usual on this instrument, but would have the comfort that comes from owning a cap if rates should rise significantly. Alternatively, he might simply turn around to one of his banks and sell a back-to-back -back five year cap on three-month LIBOR, struck at 5% and earning him an upfront 449 basis points, as we know, in effect bringing down his funding cost to LIBOR flat on an accrual basis at least, but without any longer the protection that would come if LIBOR rises above 5%. The diagram that now appears in front of you depicts graphically this last situation in which the investor has bought the capped FRN from the issuer, while the issuer has turned around and monetized the LIBOR cap he has bought, enabling him to pay to the investor the additional 1% per annum over LIBOR. We now turn to a floored FRN, which we can hopefully tackle quite rapidly, since the key principles conceptually are more or less the same as for the capped FRNs. Floored FRNs are generally issued when spot LIBOR is very low, so investors need some minimum coupon rate above the spot LIBOR level. Our first step then is to shift the entire LIBOR curve downward by 200 basis points as we do on this worksheet labeled floored FRN and then replace reprice all items including in particular the floors appearing over on the right. We note, for example, that a five-year floor struck at 2% costs 175 basis points up front. This time it is the investor buying this option and hence needing to pay for it, presumably by accepting a negative spread over LIBOR on her coupon in exchange for the enhanced minimum coupon when LIBOR is very low. The new term sheet, of course, reads as appears here, which again should lead to no surprises. 
Please note carefully that since the LIBOR component of the coupon is subject to the 2% floor, but the negative 40 basis point spread applies in all cases, the minimum coupon under the entire instrument comes to only 1.6%, lower obviously than 2%, but still representing a 110 basis point yield enhancement versus LIBOR spot. This time it is when LIBOR rises above 1.6% that the investor begins underperforming the regular FRN since she would then be holding a note that pays a sub-LIBOR return due to the negative 40 basis point spread. Inevitably we show here the graph which compares the coupon under the floored FRN shown in red to that of a regular FRN shown in blue. Once again raising, we hope, no surprises at all. We skip the discussion of mark to market on this instrument since we address this topic again in a great deal of detail with our next instrument, the colored FRN. Colored FRNs are issued for the same reasons as floored FRNs, namely to enhance yield when spot LIBOR is unusually low. With this instrument, however, the investor pays for the floor by selling a cap at a strike that earns her a premium that typically offsets and sometimes even exceeds that of the bought floor. Assume for example that our investor buys the 2% floor and sells a 4% cap whose premium comes to 194 basis points up front. Netting this premium against the floor premium of 175 up front leaves the investor earning a net up front 19 basis points. This we again convert into a five-year quarterly annuity this time of 4.21 basis points but will not show the calculation any longer since we have done this so many times already. We round this down to four basis points annually paid in quarterly installments and this becomes the positive spread over LIBOR of the note but which is now subject to a maximum coupon of, let's see, 4.54% and a floor of 2.04%. More formally, the term sheet for this instrument, known as a colored floater or colored FRN, or simply min-max floater on account of its inclusion of a long floor short cap combination appears now in front of you and should once again give rise to no surprises at all. Some of the cosmetics of this instrument may seem a little peculiar to you such as the spread over LIBOR of specifically four basis points, the minimum coupon of 2.04% and the maximum coupon of 4.54%. And indeed, 
you would be right to suspect that some polishing would take place before launching an instrument of this kind into the marketplace. So the arranger would seek to identify some other combination of caps, floors, spread over LIBOR, and profit margin that in aggregate allows for more rounded and easier to remember combinations for the above items usually in multiples of 10 basis points or 25 basis points for each. Thus the term sheet we wrote above might be amended to provide for a LIBOR plus 10 basis points coupon remember it was four basis points only previously subject however to a less generous cap of 4.5 percent and a less generous floor of 2 percent terms you must admit that are far easier to remember and more user-friendly than what we had in the term sheet shown above We conclude this chapter by revisiting the question of how this instrument's fair value might vary as market factors change. We first observe that just like the capped FRN, the holder here is short a cap, which will of course increase the investment's price volatility and the number of market factors to which the investor is exposed in comparison to a regular FRN. The investor is also long the floor here, which complicates the discussion even further. It should be pretty obvious that a secular increase in rates hurts the note holder very significantly, since it would reduce the value of the floor that she owns and increase the value of the cap that she sold. It is equally obvious that the reverse is true when rates decline in a secular manner as this would increase the value of the long floor and diminish that of the short cap. Less predictable in this instance is the effect of an increase or reduction in implied vols for caps and floors. Since the investor is long vol under one option, i.e. under the bought floor, but short vol under the other option, namely the sold cap. Therefore one position would benefit while the other one would be hurt if vol moves either up or down but presumably the effects will substantially offset in only the most unusual cases. A detailed discussion of this point is beyond the scope of this module, but suffice it to say that, in general, the option that is closest to the money, defined, as you may recall, by reference to the forward LIBOR levels generally is more sensitive to changes in implied volatility or as geeks would say has the higher vega. Thus if for example the yield curve has risen and flattened to the point where most LIBOR forwards are now close to four and a half percent then the two percent floor would be quite far out of the money and therefore would have a very low vega while the four and a half percent cap would be at or very close to the money and so would have quite high vega in such a circumstance an increase in vol would increase the value of the short cap more than it would the long floors, hurting the investor on a net basis. 
We have reached the end of this chapter, but leave you with a final slide that now combines on one single diagram the coupon graphs for all three instruments we have analyzed so far, along with that of the regular FRN, to reinforce your understanding of the nature of each instrument and the differences between them. So in pink we have the regular FRN. In this dark red we have the hockey stick for the capped FRN. In this light green we have the hockey stick bending in the opposite direction of the floored FRN. And finally in blue we have the zigzag with a floor and a cap of the colored FRN. We have also completed part one of this module at this point.